Welcome back to The Jump. Now, yesterday, Mark Cuban confirmed that his team had stopped playing the national anthem before games. Cuban said he made the decision not to play the national anthem after consulting with NBA Commissioner Adam Silver. But now today, NBA Chief Communications Officer Mike Bass issued this statement saying, quote, with NBA teams now in the process of welcoming fans back to their arenas, all teams will play the national anthem in keeping with longstanding league policy. So an interesting situation has developed here, and I'm thrilled to now welcome in Mavericks team owner Mark Cuban. We'll have team CEO Sint Marshall joining us in a minute as well. But Mark, take me through a little bit how you guys came to this decision and then what the conversations were in the past 24 hours that led to this morning the, ish, the release issued by the league overturning that. Well, let me take you because there's a lot of misinformation out there. Um, first, we, we're always talking to our community. I mean, that's something Stint stands for and is very insistent upon and has become a, you know, a core part of who we are at the Dallas Mavericks. And in listening to the community, there were quite a few people that voiced their, their concerns or really their, their fears that the national anthem and did not fully represent, did not fully represent them, that their voices were not being heard. And so we've had a lot of conversations about whether or not we should play the anthem. And so during the first preseason game, we decided to, to not play it and just see what the response was, um, knowing that we were going to have ongoing um, conversations about it. We didn't make uh, any decision to never play the national anthem. That wasn't the case at all. We didn't cancel the national anthem. We still had our flag flying proud and up on the wall at the American Airlines Center, and everybody had the opportunity to address it and, and, and you know, pray to it or salute to it or however, whatever their feelings are. Um, and we, you know, as the games went by, you know, honestly, we, we kept on talking about what we were going to do at some point, um, but obviously it came to the head when it was reported that at one of our games um, that we hadn't played it. But you know, the bottom line is we had always discussed the fact that we probably went end up playing it at some point, probably when fans came back, but there was never any final decision that had made that we would not play the anthem. And then what were the conversations you had over the past 24 hours since it came into the news that you guys had not been playing it since someone noticed, frankly, and started asking about it. What was the back and forth between you and the league office? None, really. I mean, I talked some to Adam um, and got his feedback and gave him my feedback that, you know, we had people who were upset by it and were passionate in, in them being upset. And we had people that fully supported it. That, you know, a lot of people said that they don't understand why, you know, the anthem is played prior to a game. Others said, you know, it, it shouldn't be played prior to the game. Others said it didn't represent them and they're concerned about being played and it made them uncomfortable. And we talked about all the different feedback that we had received. And how did they come to the decision then that everybody would play the anthem, including the Mavericks? Did you have that conversation first before the press release went out or did you learn from it? <laughs> Basically, you know, as I mentioned earlier, we had never decided that we weren't going to play the anthem when we had fans in. Mm -hmm. You know, we had some fans in last game, but they were all um, healthcare workers and people we were honoring. They weren't our ticket holders or season ticket holders at all. So, you know, we didn't know, you know, that it would be brought to a head at this point. But it was an ongoing discussion in terms of when we would have our paying fans or season ticket holders back in the arena that we would address it then. So was this press release your first sort of in information that, OK, this is going to be the policy now going forward league wide? You mean from the league? Yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah, of course. You know, but I'm, I mean, I knew the press release was coming and we we're in full agreement with it. Look, we have no problem playing the national anthem at all. I stand for the national anthem. My hand is always over my heart. We've supported the National Flag Foundation and done work with them. You know, that isn't the issue at all. The, the real issue is how do you how do you express the voices of those who feel the anthem doesn't represent them or cause causes them consternation? And how do you do that going forward? Well, that's, that's why we have SINT. You know, that, that's the programs that we're setting up with SINT. You know, we listen, learn, we unite. We, you know, we have courageous conversations and we'll have many more of those, you know, with our current players, with our former players, with key people in the community. We have DMAC, which are our, our organization of people from the community that we listen to on these issues. You know, we don't do this in a vacuum. We make these decisions after having talked to and listening and, and making sure that, you know, our goal is to have all voices heard, not just the loudest voices. We were hoping to have Sin on with us right now, having some technical difficulties, so we might be able to get her back later in the show. So I will just ask you for now, though, Mark, 
you may now fe face potential backlash kind of in both directions. You were talking about the feedback you got from people saying the anthem doesn't represent them. But of course, there are a lot of people who feel very strongly that the anthem should be played before games. Mm -hmm. What kind of backlash might you expect from that side? I mean, you know, when you try to do things that are hard, it's never going to be easy, right? When you try to, you know, create social change, it's never going to be easy. We saw that all summer long. You know, we listened to people and, you know, there were a lot of people who tried to stand up for what they believed in and weren't really hard, weren't really heard rather. You know, th these are difficult conversations that are not going to go away, whether or not we play the national anthem. You know, we're just, you know, as Senna said to me, we're just glad that we're having this conversation out of choice, not because of some tragedy that ignited the conversation. So and now is the time to have it. I know that you said that you went sort of back and forth in conversations with the league leading up to this. Did you consider maybe bringing this up at a Board of Governors meeting, or would you still do that to have a more of a conversation league-wide on what the NBA should be doing here? You know, we'll have ongoing conversations. We obviously had a lot of those this summer, and we have a lot of ongoing conversations with our players, the Players Association, because this is, this is an issue that's important to us. This is not something that goes away. You know, there is systemic racism in this country. There are people who are afraid to walk down the street in this country. There are people, when we talk about injustice for all, who don't receive justice for all, you know, and that is a problem. So this is a conversation we have to have now. You know, it's, the anthem, you know, may be an initiator to those conversations, then that's great. But that's the far more important thing. And that's that was the genesis of everything that we've done. Well, we will look forward to seeing how all of that develops. Mark, thank you so much for joining us today. I appreciate it. Okay. Thanks for having me, Rachel. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN Plus.